The percussionist here in Logic Pro for iPad 2 has had a huge upgrade along with the other session players. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about how to use it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome back to Logic Pro for iPad 2. Now the percussionist is one of our drummer session players, but as you can see here, there's some variation in how you use it over the regular drummer. So let's dive in and find out all about it. Here we have a project with a bass player and a keyboard player. And if you wanna learn how to use these and the standard drummer, check out the other videos linked in the description. Now, however, we wanna add a percussionist. To do that, we tap on the plus button in the top left corner, go to session player, and change this one to drummer and then tap in the middle there. This will add an acoustic drummer. To change to a percussionist, we need to tap here where it says pop rock and our acoustic drummer. And right at the top here, we need to tap this one where it says the type. We wanna change this one to percussionist and then we need to select what type. We have a Latin, a pop and a songwriter percussionist. Let's start with Latin because this is kind of a Latin kind of groove and you can see there it will dial in one of the default percussion sounds. To hear just the percussion sound, we tap on the preview button here in the top left. And tap again to stop. To hear this percussion with the rest of our tracks that we've already got added in here, let's hit the play button. Sounds pretty cool, but we have all of the power of the drummer session player to adapt and change our sound. First up, we can add a preset. To do that, we tap in the top here where it says preset, and we've got a bunch of different presets to choose from. If you wanted to make this say a Miami Nights, we tap on that one and now take a listen. And you'll notice that every time you change the preset up the top here, it will change all of the patterns, the instruments, and even the details here. Let's dive into those now and show you how to use them. On our main tab, first we have complexity and intensity. These sliders will tell the percussionist how complex and how intense to play. If we turn both of these all the way up, let's take a listen. or all the way down and you get something like this. So you can get everything from a nice, soft, gentle backing to something pretty full on. Next up is probably the coolest thing in Percussionist is that we can adjust and tap on and off each of our different instruments. So if you want nothing from these first things, from your cowbells and your sticks, you can actually turn those off. Same here with your tambourine and your shakers, you can turn them on and off. And the same here with your congos and your bongos, if that's the correct name for these, help me out if not, <laughs> down in the comments, but we can turn each of those on and off and that will affect what's played in our patterns which we'll show you now to adjust patterns we tap on the patterns here so here you go we can choose from one of six different patterns and every time we tap that you'll see it will change here but it will only still keep in the instruments we've selected if we tap one of these off like so you'll see that our patterns now will only impact that one cowbell track so if for instance you only want cowbell we can turn everything else off by tapping on all of these and making sure that they're all turned off like so and then you just get more cowbell. For our other instruments, works exactly the same. So we tap on the Patterns Browser and we can select from our patterns there. And the same here with our last one. So you can mix and match three different types and six different combinations to get a unique sound every time. If we want a steady beat, we can turn our fills down completely and we won't get any fills. If you wanna add some fills in, we can turn the fill amount up. So let's put in a whole bunch of fills. And then you've got your fill complexity here. So you can choose how simple or how complex. You know what I like to do. Let's turn it up to 11 and see what we get here. That sounds awesome. To add some swing, we can use the swing knob. We can turn up the swing and change it between eighth note and 16th note. Here is a swinging kind of beat. And as you hear there, some of your more complex sounds don't often work with a swing beat. So you do need to play around with that to make sure you get it right in the zone that you'd like it. Let's dive over to the details tab now. So we'll tap on details and 
what you'll notice here is that this looks very different to the details tab for our drummer and other session players, our acoustic drummer and other session players. We still have the same feel here to go whether you want a push or a pull feel. You can adjust the dynamics as to whether you want lots of sort of loud and soft or whether you want it more flat. You've got that great humanized dial here and you can even change the tempo to half time, standard time or double time. But we have this. What's all this about? Well, that's what we're going to explain now. The complexity range controls how much complexity there is going to be with each of our instruments. And the reason it's a range is that it's going to vary that up. The reason this is so cool is that you get a very varied performance. It kind of randomizes things. So for each different instrument, let's grab the cowbell because cowbells are cool. We can drive these up and down and see how when we grab a handle, it's going to either make it a small range or a large range. And then if we grab in the middle, we can actually make it anywhere we like in this complexity range. So if we wanted it to just be simple up to about medium, we can put the range for our cowbell just there. For this demo, let's go back to our main and turn off everything else. So we're going to tap on all of these other instruments and turn all of those off. Go back to details so that we can just hear the cowbell. It sounds like this. There you go, not very complex on that cowbell, but if we want to turn the range right up here, let's just say we want the cowbell to always be really complex. Look at that, and it changes right here, and we get something like this. instant more cowbell. Or we can tell Logic Pro that we'd actually love a really big range. So what this will do is it'll make sure that it'll sometimes be complex, sometimes a little simpler. And yes, it does tie into your complexity over here. So you can drive that all the way down and it's going to reduce it. And if you bring this up, it will increase it. But it kind of gives you instrument by instrument control over the complexity. Let's see what it does with the range all the way up. So it will vary things up. It'll still use those fills and other things as well. However, you might be thinking, how does it know how often to vary? Well, that's where you have this, your phrase variation. At the moment, it's very low. What happens if we drive this all the way up to the top? Well, it changes more consistently or inconsistently, depending how you look at it. So we've got a lot more variation of our phrases. If we now hit the preview button, it's going to give us a lot more variation in our sounds. Let's go back to the main tab and turn on all of the other instruments. And now you can see on the details tab, we can adjust each one of these independently. So if you wanted some very basic sort of Congo Bongo styles, you want a complex sort of tambourine here, you want your shakers to be a little bit simpler or maybe middling here, and you want a really complicated cowbell, you can dial everything up. And with that phrase variation up to the top there, you're going to get something unique, but also quite varied. Let's bring it back in with the rest of our track. Now, I've probably overdone it there for the sake of demonstrating, but you can see the power of this, that you can dial in exactly what you want and use all of these different variation sliders to get a really unique custom sound. Now, one thing you may see that's missing if you've played with the other drummers is the manual tab. Yes, we have no manual here, because it's just a very complicated instrument to have all nine of these with their own manual settings, it would not be the easiest thing to control. So instead, you get these complexity sliders you can play with in the details tab. There's one other way that you can vary things up and that is using the perform again button. So if we tap in the bottom left here, you'll notice that it's going to slightly change. Every time we tap it, it's going to give us a different performance. So it'll slightly vary and give us something slightly different each time. So if you've dialed everything in and you're like, it's kind of right, but just try again, percussionist, hit perform again, and it will do it again. To change your percussionist style, tap here where we've got the Latin, and let's go to pop. And everything here works exactly the same, except you'll notice that there's some slight variation with the different instruments that you're using. You've got hand claps here, you've got some slight changes to that. You can use the same complexity sliders here, you can use the same presets to change things up, and you'll see it'll add and remove different instruments there, and change up the complexity 
intensity and the intensity settings for you. So let's take a listen to this one with the night after night preset. Not bad, probably not as good as our Latin. Let's try the final one. Again, we tap here, we go to Songwriter. This is one that I like to use a lot because this has some interesting things. This has your stomps and your kicks and your, your cajon sounds, and it's pretty cool. Again, let's go with, say, the Rockwood sound here. This is looking good because it's got our cajon and our stomps in here, and let's preview it by tapping up here. Pretty good. Once again, we've got all of our main section here and our details tab so that we can dial everything in exactly as we want it. Let's say we want these stomps a little bit more, uh, less complex, and we want the, the claps to be a really sort of interesting clap pattern and lots of variation. Let's bring this back in to our track. Too cool. A few final settings here in the top right. We can tap on this one here. We can actually lock in our fills, our swing, and our settings. So that's handy to make sure that if you've got things dialed in and you don't want to change them by mistake, you can actually lock them down using that setting. And finally, we have the three dots here where we can load the default patch. If we've changed the patch, which I'll show you in a moment, we can recall the default so it'll go back to our default settings. To change your instrument patch, we can tap in the bottom left here and go to the browser and go to instrument instrument patches. Now, the interesting thing here is that you really don't want to mess with this too much because they're very custom patches. So your Latin, your songwriter, and your pop are really the only ones you want to use. If you start changing these up, unless they're a percussionist, it's going to do some interesting things. Let's show you what I mean. So with the replace button on here, if we tap on scientific method, it's going to change to the scientific method kit. And now let's see what we get. So you can hear and you can see there that it's kind of done a good job of this, but it's using a drum kit. Let's sort of make this more uh, more obvious by grabbing the heavy kit and putting this on here. And yeah, you might be thinking, well, a heavy kit doesn't really have those instruments. It doesn't. It'll do something more like this. So all the heavy kit has is a shaker that it can add, so it's not going to work. So I suggest you leave the patches alone when you're using percussionists. And remember, if you mess things up, that handy setting in the top right here, we can come back and we can load the default patch and we're back to our songwriter sound. There you have it. How cool is the percussionist? Some great options in here to dial in some custom percussion sounds. You can mix and match with your acoustic and your electronic drummers. I'll show you how to do that in another video you can see there and in the description as well. And if you want to learn a heap more, there's a whole playlist of videos all about Logic Pro for iPad 2 there as well. Hope you found this one useful. I'll see you next time.